Hey guys, D-Ray in the house. Uh, it's been a, quite a while. Um, just want to touch base with you guys. I actually had a, uh, got diagnosed and tested positive for COVID uh, back on January 23rd. And uh, it was a six week ordeal. I had COVID and then I got double pneumonia. Um, it was really bad, man, for a while. Um, never, got made, never got to the hospital, but I did have oxygen concentration uh, in my house. So um, probably just back to work this week for the first time. I'm about 80%. I'm still not 100%. I got some lingering symptoms, but I just want to touch base with you guys. Um, again, if you like this channel, subscribe button below. Okay, like this video. Click the like button. Okay, share with your friends. Again, uh, this channel is basically for, for, for that, the, the independent life insurance agent out there that needs direction. Okay, and I try to share with you guys everything that I, of my knowledge over, over th almost three decades of selling over the telephone. All right. Um, what I wanted to speak about today is something that a lot of agents that struggle in the industry have. That's overthinking. Okay, overthinking is is basically, um, I guess, the best way to, to go ahead and describe it is over analysis gives you mental paralysis. Okay, remember. This business can be very, very easy if you let it be, all right? Overthinking is something that um, a lot of agents do. You know, um, what happens if the client says this, if there's a special rebuttal that, that you know, that I need to answer for this. And what you got to understand is if you properly get on the phone with a client and you gain control of the conversation and you passionately care about the client, your tonality shows that, Okay, and you portray yourself as an expert in your, in your business, as the best in the business, or an expert in your field, an authoritative figure, and it comes across as your uh, over your tone. Okay, they're gonna know that without you having to say it. Okay, so again, gaining control of that conversation and having the client really be like, all right, you know, this is a guy I want to listen to. Okay, that alleviates all those objections you're gonna get. Remember, objections are nothing but a BS smokescreen. It's a creative way for the client. Um, to go ahead and say, you know what, um, I just don't trust you. Okay, so you can have all the rebuttals in the world. Okay, and you can you can box a client in, but once you box him in, you can you might even close the guy. But those persistency in those types of deals is low. Okay, in other words, I mean, there's a reason why most of the carriers out there, okay, have a 65% guideline for um, persistency. Guys, 65%, 70% is awful. Okay, that means for every three deals that you write, one is getting charged back. Okay, that's 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 awful. Okay, so it's usually how you're handling the call. You're bringing the guy to the mat. Okay, and that all comes back to overthinking. What rebuttal do I need to use? Who's you got a special rebuttal? What do I say when I say this? If they say I got to speak to the wife. What do I need to say? You got to really embrace the fact that if you get those types of obje objections, they're smoke screens, guys. It's just they don't trust you. You said something in the beginning of the phone call that turned them off, okay? And if you're dealing with final expense, seniors are smart guys. They've been around a long time, they've got a lot of wisdom. They can sniff out the bullshit, okay? So again, overthinking is not good. And also in underwriting, okay? Underwriting, uh, you guys gotta know your craft, man. You know, you should have, those of you that have 12, 15 carriers, you're killing yourself. Narrow it down. You can literally have three, four carriers and take care of 99% of all the health impairments out there. Really? Okay. Uh, you have a Moo, you have American Amicable, um, Aetna, CVS Health, uh, GTL, AIG, five. That'll cover 99% of every health issue out there. Okay. 99%. So um, those of you who have 12, 15 carriers, oh boy. Wait, where should I put this? Where should I put this client? <laughs> really, guys. And you got to sell on value, not on price. One thing I like to tell clients in the beginning, somewhere in the conversation of the call, is are you a value buyer or are you a price buyer? Well, what do you mean, Dan? Well, value is you like to get the best value for your money, but you're one of those guys that will sacrifice value for the best price. Oh, I'm a value buyer. Done. That means you just took the best price off the table. Give them the best value for their money. Okay, my opinion is Aetna is the best value because it's great for cross-selling. It's good for Medicare supplements where you can, you know, down the road if you ever add them. OK, you, they, you open them up to a 14 percent discount. And normally with that discount, depending on the state, it gives them the lower rate. Also, it opens the door to talk to them about supplements. OK, you don't need to be a rocket science or Medicare expert to price shop a supplement. 
Okay, it's just a price. It's McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King. They just have different prices and different plans. So if you can save a client 30, 40 bucks from going to plan F to a plan N if they're healthy, you just got a client for life. All right. So also it opens up the door for critical illness policies. You know, when you're in, when you're in, the, in the midst of the discussion oh, with the client and you're gaining rapport, natural rapport, just by simply asking good questions, if you find out they have a cancer history in their family, okay, at, you know, towards the end when you're locking up, say, listen, you know, um, you told me about your, your, you know, your father had cancer. I'm sure. Did, did he have a cancer policy? Well, let me ask you a question. You know, I'm sure the average person out there when they get diagnosed with cancer, they go through treatment and everything else. But, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, health insurance doesn't cover all the costs. The average person that diagnosed with cancer outlays more than $20,000 out of their own pocket over a period of treatment. OK, so, I mean, you know, that's stressful for somebody that's got cancer, Mrs. Jones or Mrs. Mr. Jones. Oh, can you go into it? You know, um, let me give me a price on that. Just in just in case, you know, you tell me, yeah, you can't. I'm sure your father had the cancer. OK, when they were diagnosed, certainly wouldn't be upset if they got twenty thousand dollars check in their, their hands just for a mere diagnosis of, of a cancer. OK, and I'm sure that would alleviate a lot of stress. So, again, going back to overthinking with, with underwriting before I go off topic. All right. You guys need to know that when a client says something, where are you going to put them? OK, underwriting is very simple. If you understand what they're looking for, underwriting comes to two, it's two top, two, two parts, questions on the application, combination of medications, period, period. Every application, different carriers, they all have different questions and how they ask them. Okay. So when you're looking at it, okay, this is in my master class. Okay. I have a whole, whole um, topic on simplifying underwriting, keeping it simple. Okay. So. You got on this. Got to know the questions, guys. Okay, so if there's all no questions on the application, then it's just medication combinations. That is it. Okay, a lot of agents out there they ask absurd questions because they're not understanding the philosophy behind of what underwriting is. It's just questions on the application and combinations of medications, and that's it. And the combination of medications you need to know about are, are you know, like furosemide or you know, um, Coreg or Carvidiol. OK, that's that's obviously points of congestive heart failure. So as you learn it and you get more experience, these things, people say in medication, uh, a light bulb goes off, spirolactone, isorbide, stuff like that. Those are those are some serious medications for usually cardiovascular health issues like heart heart issues. OK, nitroglycerin, you know, um, you got to know where to put them. You know, you got to know where the time limits are and that. Are they, are they getting a refills? So, again, underwriting, a lot of agents, they overthink things. OK, so you got to keep the underwriting really simple. And the less amount of carriers that you, you have, the better it is. OK, now, now, again, I'm not saying if you have 15 carriers, don't get your appointments, but you have niche four or five niche carriers that you use all the time. So you can know them cold in and out. All right. So. Um, so with that said, I just wanted to go over a little overthinking, uh, you know, talk to a couple of agents uh, this week. Uh, my first week back, guys, since I mean, the COVID was pretty bad with me, man. I got it. And again, I was literally in bed uh, five weeks, changing my clothes five times a night, um, just sweating. The double pneumonia scared the crap out of me because, uh, you know, usually COVID double pneumonia is a lot worse than regular pneumonia, which I can vouch for. A um, couple of times I was a threat away from, from going to the hospital. I, I'm not a, I didn't want to go to the hospital. So I'm sure everybody, anybody in my position probably would have went. But it just I'm one of those people that I feel like I'll go to the hospital, I get more sicker. <laughs> so um, so I like to take the you know, thumb thick headed stubborn. But anyway, um, so I just want to go ahead and touch base with you guys. It's been a, quite a while and um, go over a very important topic or over, overthinking. OK, uh, it takes a ton of money out of your pocket. OK, stop overthinking, you know, just make try to simplify your business, man, and keep basic principles. Gain control of the conversation, passionately care about the client, ask good questions, okay? Know your underwriting, sound like a, you know you know what you're talking about, like being an authoritative figure. Know your business, guys, okay? It requires a little homework at night. Every single day, make one less mistake a day and strive to be in the best you could possibly be in this business. Be an expert, okay? Be the best in the business, okay? When you talk to a client, have that tone come over that you are the best, okay, without saying it. OK, and you do that. I'm telling you, those objections will fizzle out. OK, and you, if you understand the underwriting, OK, simplify that for yourself. 
you'll do less pivots because you're going to know you're going to, because again, you're simplifying your business. You're going from 15 carriers down to four or five, not for nothing at a four or five to a GI that one, you got one GI carrier. That's your favorite. Mine personally is AIG because the built-in living benefits. Okay. GTL is a great carrier for in-betweens. Then you should have three basic carriers like me. Mine is Moo, Aetna and Amam. Okay. American Amicable. Um, I'm actually just going to start writing a lot of business with them because I like their process. And, um, you know, I just switched them out from, and I got other carriers like Trinity and stuff like that, um, especially carriers. But but Liberty Bankers Life, I only use Liberty Bankers Life for for um, you know uh, depression. You know, if they have multiple medications of depression, I don't even use them for um, um, for COPD anymore. I get Aetna for that. You know, um, so so other carriers outside those five that you should have, you should use just for specifically for. Um, Especially health issues, okay, like Trinity cardiovascular issues, neuropathy, RNA. You know what I mean? Um, until RNA doesn't allow it anymore, because I've heard that they're probably going to get to a certain point that if a client has neuropathy due to diabetes, then they're it's going it's to be a graded policy sooner or later. Um, I think I'm, I'll tell you that COVID um, increases a lot of diabetes. Um, I did a lot of research on this, man. My blood sugar is a bit high after after this um it's just been awful but but going to not saying your niches have a couple of niches okay stick with those that's going to be 90 percent of your business outside the realm no like well if, if a client has xyz health impairment i'm going to bring them there okay remember guys it's the best it's at the best point of success for an approved policy tell a client that listen it's not necessarily just throwing a dart at the dart we, i we, you know blindfolded it's my main focus is to make sure that whatever carry we go is the best fit you and it's the best success for you getting approved. Just say it like that, you know, but um, I just want to touch base with you guys and um, say hi. Um, and again, I hope you guys are kicking ass. All right. Um, anything, you know, shoot me a message or whatever the case may be, but I just want to go over overthinking how it really takes a lot of money out of your pockets. All right. Again, once again, uh, subscribe. If you never did um, share this, like this, share with your friends, all right. Uh, again, this channel's main focus is to help other agents. Okay. Get out of their own way. All right. Because I was once those agents as well. All right. Long time ago. So with that said, I, I uh, have a kick-ass week, guys. All right. Talk to you soon.